65,000 tons, top speed 25 knots, and capable of holding more than 70 aircraft. This is HMS Queen Elizabeth, Britain's most powerful warship. A floating runway for fighter jets and helicopters, it can fulfill many roles anywhere in the world. Humanitarian aid, disaster relief, and of course, high intensity war fighting. of anything that you want to do from the maritime environment, this is what this does. Therefore, it's choice for politicians. Everything from the soft end, from defence diplomacy and engagement through uh, disaster relief, all the way up to that hard end of launching a fifth generation aircraft from a fifth generation carrier uh, to deliver you know, ordnance uh, at a time and place of the Prime Minister's choosing. And that's what it offers, is flexibility. But she won't be alone. This aircraft carrier has a strike group protecting it. The core national carrier strike group will be two destroyers, two frigates, of course the aircraft carrier and the jets that go with that. The rotary wing aircraft that operate to protect the carrier group from the carrier and embarked in the escorts. And then two support ships as well, as well as a nuclear submarine. So a huge uh, capability that you can deploy anywhere on the globe. But it doesn't all have to be together all the time. And so you can split that up, you can choose how you want to employ them across a geographic region to gain maximum influence. And this is its flight deck. It's around 900 foot long, making it almost three football pitches worth in length. But in order for the aircraft to safely get on and get off this deck, it had to be made with special material. We're standing on the thermal metallic spray, this TMS UK design material. Um, you can see it's a slightly different colour to the rest of the deck, uh, but it's got really good properties at dissipating heat, i.e. getting rid of the heat of the exhaust of the F-35. Um, as you can see here, it's unmarked. That's had 70 landings of an F-35 on it already, and it hasn't burned the deck. That's crucial to the way we operate this aircraft, so that we remain flexible, I can bring lots of aircraft to the same spots, and I can deliver mission effectiveness quickly. One deck, two islands. One navigates the ship, the other is called Flyco. From here, the crew monitor and communicate with pilots to coordinate takeoff and landings from the deck. Queen Elizabeth is the first British carrier to have a twin island design. It's communication, it's planning, and it's, it's about not rushing too quickly. So initially, it'll be about um, integrating them into the carrier. And that's, that's not just the pilots, it's the uh, maintainers that have to be on deck at night in all weather. It's the support personnel inside the carrier. Just the simple basics of can they get from where they are accommodated in sleep to go and get some food in the morning for breakfast to their place of work, to the flight deck, you know. So crawl, walk, run, you know, you've heard that mantra a lot. Um, that's very much the, uh, the way we'll do it. Carrier qualifications initially, just to get the pilots qualified to fly uh, from and to this deck. And then we'll start to operationalise what we do. It will be within the task group uh, construct. You know, can the jet launch from here on a mission, speak to the Type 45 destroyer, get itself to the target, identify the target with all the sensors, having fought a threat to get there, drop the weapon, know that it went bang and, hit and, and destroy the target, safely get back, talking off to the right people, land on, mission debrief, go again. Below the decks, the hangar, from where many of the aircraft will wait to be called into action, currently being used to store supplies. But once operational, four fighter jets can be moved from this hangar to the flight deck in just one minute. This aircraft carrier could hold a mix of RAF Chinooks, Army Apaches and Royal Navy Merlins and Wildcats. All that alongside the F-35B Lightning Stealth fighter jets. There will also be a crew of up to 1,600, each of them living on board the vessel for months at a time to prepare for when she's fully operational. The US are very impressed by what we've built and what we're delivering here. They, we work so closely with them in, in moving this capability forward and we'll continue to do that through Westat 19 and have levels of interoperability that we've never seen before. 
for example, the US Marine Corps Squadron, which will embark during the first operational deployment in 2021. But yeah, anyone looking at this aircraft carrier would say, wow, uh, th this is something that we should be really proud of.